Hello everyone in the Blender universe. This is Rich again and everybody's been requesting a tutorial how to make clothes using modeling cloth. Uh, everybody's been very supportive of modeling cloth. I've gotten some donations from people and some people have signed up on Patreon which is super awesome so it looks like I will be committing regular time to add-ons that I will provide freely to the Blender community. So what I wanted to do in this tutorial is just show some really basic things that you can do with modeling cloth. And it took me, I don't know, a few minutes to make this skirt and this top. Uh, it seemed like it was super easy, so I was going to show how I did it in this tutorial. So let's start by, actually, the skirt is really, really simple, so I'm not going to bother making it right now. But I'm going to make that top, so let me show you how I did that. Um, first thing you want to do is just add a plane. So, mesh, plane, and eh, it's an okay spot for it. Um, I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis, and I'm going to scale it up so that it sort of fits the body of the avatar. Something like that, I guess, roughly-ish. And now I want to subdivide it, and you can, you know, hit W and subdivide, or I just have it on a hotkey. And, I don't know, I guess that looks about right. Uh, the resolution of your subdivisions will affect, like, how tight your wrinkles are and that kind of stuff. But the, the more data you get here, the more you subdivide it, the more it kind of slows down. So I'd like to work with it uh, with, you know, not a ridiculous amount of subdivisions. Something like this is fine. So I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm going to move it back here. And now I want to flip the normals so that when it comes together, all the normals will be pointing outwards. So I'm just going to do flip normals right there. And if I didn't do that, you'd notice it. But since I did that, you won't notice anything. Now I'm going to select these edges like that, and I'm going to hit sew lines over here. And these edges like this and do the same thing over here and now I want to make sure that my avatar is actually a collider object so if you've got modeling cloth installed you'll have this extended tools panel and you'll have the option to set a collider so my avatar is set to collider and I actually played around with the inner and outer margins a little bit to make this work depending on your real world scale you'll need to adjust these so just be aware of that. Experiment with some simple objects first to get your inner and outer margins about what you like, and then you can use those settings in the future. So, okay, now I've got this set to Collider. I've got this divided up and got sew edges on it, and I'm going to hit Modeling Cloth, and then I'm going to hit Continuous Update so it starts to run. Now, theoretically, it's behaving as cloth now, and yes, it is. I can grab it and stuff. So I think I want to turn the velocity down a little bit for now. I don't know. And I'm going to turn the sew edges, or the sew force up. And when I do that, it's going to sew it together around the body of Yon Avatar. And this is not set to Collider. I suppose I could set it to Collider. And that will theoretically wrap around the skirt. The um, Collision system is not perfect. Um, I already have some thoughts for how to improve it. Uh, it's just, you know, it's on my to-do list. So I will improve the collision system, time allowing, as well as multiple other things. And actually, as I was doing this tutorial, I kept running into bugs. So I just had my uh, console window open, and I was dealing with every bug report as I tried all the different features and got myself into weird situations. And I fixed about a dozen bugs. So Hopefully this is going to be a lot more stable than it was. All right, I'm going to turn my sew force up to one so it sews together all the way. And this skirt is currently just kind of annoying me, so I'm going to hide it for now. And you can see I got some pretty sharp wrinkles. Um, when I go to subdivide this, it looks pretty cool. So some of these wrinkles are a little too sharp, I think. So I'm going to fix some of the wrinkles that are too sharp. And the way to do that, I'm going to... Um, actually, I didn't need to do that. I'm going to 
turn it on continuous update again. And I'm going to turn the bend springs up. If I turn the bend springs up, it will automatically want to straighten. So it will get rid of those wrinkles. I got rid of some of those wrinkles, but now I've got some kind of weird poofy spot here. To get rid of that weird poofy spot, it's actually uh, because of the pattern itself. So it's basically, this pattern is too big around the back right there. So I'm going to select that area, I think it was like roughly about here-ish. And I'm going to scale it. I've got my proportional editing thing going. I'm going to scale it on the x-axis about like, I don't know, like that I guess. And now I'm going to reset it and sew it together again. And theoretically, it will be tighter in the back now because it's actually targeting a smaller size. I won't have those weird poofy things. And I'm going to turn the bend springs off so that I can get those folds back. Because I kind of want some of those folds. And now it's actually tighter here in the back. It doesn't have that big bulge in it like it did. And I kind of like it about like that. Now when I go to subdivide it, it'll have these nice wrinkles. And these areas are weird just because uh, these are sewn together and they're not joined. When you go to merge vertices and then, you know, for the final step, you can merge the vertices here and then put your subdivision surface modifier on it and it will fix that. So that that's just uh, a nuance of of modeling with subdivision, uh, subdivision surface modifiers. We're going to ignore it for now though. Um, I do want to shade smooth though just because it looks nicer that way. Well, it should look nicer. Okay, there we go. Now I like this and I want to save this. So since we're working inside of shape keys here, this is actually the modeling cloth key that has this shape. The source key still has this shape, and the basis shape still has that shape, and whatever. So one thing I noticed as I was doing this is that I would tweak it, and I would play with it, and I liked it, and then I would accidentally hit reset. So in order to fix that problem, when you get a shape that you like, um, you can go up here and just add a shape key. Well, actually, I don't want to do it that way. I want to copy from mix. So new shape from mix. And now this key 3 is the same as my modeling cloth key. And if I accidentally hit reset now, like this, and I lost all what I had, then I can just go into key number 3 and actually go to my modeling cloth key and do blend from shape and go to that new key that I just created, key 3, and I get that back into my um, modeling cloth key. Alright, so I like this. I don't want to change this. I want this to stay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my modeling cloth pin group, which is created automatically for you, and I'm going to set the weight to 1, and I'm going to assign that. So now this won't move. It'll be fixed, and the continuous update won't affect it any. So it doesn't do anything. Gravity wouldn't do anything to it, etc. Alright, now I want to do, I guess, some straps. I could do sleeves, I don't know. But I'm going to do straps because it's fairly easy. And I found that the easiest way to do this is to edit from the source key. So, let's see, I believe the center is like this line right here. So I'm going to count like one, two, three, four. And I'm going to select the fifth one. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll just do seven because I like the number seven. And one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did I do that right? One, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. No, I did not. All right, now I got what I want. And I want to make straps, so I'm going to extrude this up. And I think I just, I'm going to extrude it up about like that and then repeat it. Yeah, and I want the total length of this to be about right for the straps, which I don't know where that is, but I'll just kind of, I think one more. So we'll call it good. And now I'm going to sew these sections together. So we're going to sew here to here. 
cell lines. And here to here, cell lines. And now I need to, because I created this geometry inside the source key, it doesn't exist, well, it exists differently um, in the modeling cloth key. So I'm gonna, I'm just doing, you know, add to selection here so I can get my geometry that I like. And, oops, I think I wanna do that. And then I'm gonna do blend from shape. And in this case, I'm going to select my um, source key. Yeah, all right, and that's more or less what I wanted. And now, I like the way this looks. It looks like she's about ready to have like big gun turrets mounted on her top. Um, maybe like a rail gun or some kind of laser weapon or something. So I might just leave that, and I'm not gonna leave that. All right, so what we do now, I wanna sew these edges together. So if I hit on continuous update, it's going to do nothing. And that's because I actually duplicated these vertices from verts that were pinned. So I need to set the weight back down to zero. And now I need to refresh my continuous update and it will sew together. Like so. Pun not intended. And I don't know, I think that's okay. So I like it. I'm gonna pin it again. Put a pin in it. Ta-da! Okay, now that's stuck right there. And I don't really know what women's clothes should look like. I don't actually design women's clothes. I am married, so I do see a lot of women's clothes, and I have some vague ideas. But I am not a designer. However, in my limited understanding, I feel like I've seen some tops that have a kind of frilly thing on the bottom, so I'm going to do that because it's an example of what gather or bunching would look like and how you would do that. So I've got the bottom edge selected and I went back into my source shape because I find that that's easier. And I'm going to duplicate that section. And in order to get that gathering kind of effect, what you want to do is take a larger area and sew it to a smaller area. So I'm going to make this larger. So I'm just going to scale it up. And let me snap my cursor here so that it scales where I want it. Scale that up like so, and then I'm going to do extrude it down. And I don't want it to be super long. Um, and now I'm going to cut some loops in that, like that many-ish, I guess. Um, Right now, the way this is set up, it actually looks best if you have the same number of vertices where you sew areas together. Uh, I actually know how to fix that. I have some math and magic that I did for another project that I believe I can make it so you don't ever have to worry about that. You can just select a set of vertices over here and a set of vertices over here and sew them together and it will just work. And it won't matter if they're the same number, it'll still just look right. So I know how to do that, it's just a matter of taking the time to do it. And with all the lovely support that I'm getting, I anticipate I should be able to do that, well, and many other features, relatively soon. So please keep supporting me, especially like on Patreon. The, the monthly donation thing I, I think is the best. Um, and if not, hey, I'll still keep doing it because I love you guys and I've made my living off of Blender and it's been free all this time. And so, yeah, I'll still do it. All right, so what I want to do here is those need to be sew edges. So I'm going to just delete faces only. Um, and any edges that don't have faces around them are automatically treated as sew edges. And now I need to make sew edges between here and up here. And I'm going to go into vertex select mode. And do like so. Not that. This. And sew lines. And the same thing back here. So lines, and yeah, that looks right. And now I have to update it to my modeling cloth key because I created that geometry in the source key. So in order to do that, I just gotta go like this. Oops, select all of these. And I'm gonna go to my modeling cloth key and I'm gonna do blend from shape. It's already set here. This artifact is something that's actually 
uh, it's not it related to my add-on, it's something that's in Blender 2.8. Uh, toggle in and out of edit mode, it fixes it. And I imagine the Blender folks will fix that relatively soon. And I guess I didn't delete all my faces there. So, delete those faces. All right, so theoretically, the upper part of my garment is fixed, and the lower part, I don't want that fixed. And again, I've duplicated this from pinned vertices, so they're going to have a weight of 1. So I'm going to set it to 0. And now I'm going to hit Continuous Update again and sew it together. And theoretically, I'll get that kind of a gathery kind of thing that I want, which is, yeah, it's exactly what I was going for. And you'll notice that these edges don't sew together all the way. It's a bug that I will fix soon. Um, basically, to sew a non-pinned vertex to a pinned vertex currently doesn't sew together all the way. Um, for now, I'm just going to fix it by selecting these areas that are sewing together, and I'm going to set the weight down to zero. Okay. And now, when I sew, um, it will pull it together all the way. And this is roughly what I was going for. So I'm going to call this good, and I, I'm just going to duplicate this so I can save the result. And I'm going to go into edit mode and merge by distance. And I think, hopefully it got everything. And I'm going to check to see if there's any holes by doing select non-manifold. And I think there's a weird spot over here. Um, actually what I can do is just do select non-manifold again, or sorry, merge vertices again, and turn this up a little bit. Let's see if that fixed it. Select non-manifold. And I think, yeah, I got all my weird spots taken care of. So I'm just going to put a subdivision surface modifier on that now and shade it smooth and then I'm gonna put like my cool material I found this silk material on blend swap and I thought it looked kinda cool so um, ta-da! there you have it and I suppose if I was a little more practiced at this I could and I wasn't making a tutorial I could have made this even in less time but I thought hey that was relatively simple and more or less painless to work or to work with. So go modeling cloth. Um, yeah, if you look for my other video, it has all the links also. And um, if you guys want to see a tutorial on a specific thing, then post in the comments. Uh, hey, I want to see a tutorial on how to make like a a men's suit, and I'll be like, um, yeah, talk to me in a year. That's really complicated. Uh, well, actually, no. I, I probably will will have the tools to be able to do that in a relatively short time if I get the support. But anyway, I appreciate all of your feedback and all of your comments and all of your feature requests and especially I appreciate the donations and your generosity. That's awesome um, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks!